decided to do an upright painting um, because I was conscious when I looked at the view that I was going up and down with my head rather than side to side. So establish where you want the horizon, slightly higher than the middle, and I'm going to start with the main focal point, the church tower, and position it slightly to the right of centre. It's a very windy day, um, and the wind is actually going to get up, I think, uh, later on because uh, as the tide comes up. So I'm having to hold the drawing board. Although I've got the legs of my easel stuck in the soft, sort of marshy mud, um, the drawing board itself acts a little bit like a sail and wobbles. I don't think it will be too much of a problem other than when I'm doing very careful things. And it'll add to the, hopefully, the sense of having a, a bright and breezy day in my end final painting. This is a piece of Arsh 140 pound rough paper. In fact it's a bit, um, you'll see the surface is a little bit uneven and that's because it's, I'm painting on the back of a, of a failure um, to be honest. Um, and I'm using a, a 3B pencil. I'd rather paint, draw with a quite a short pencil which I can hold um, across my uh, the palm of my hand when necessary. Um, and I try and draw with my arm and a fairly stiff ri wrist. I gradually work uh, down uh, the paper, trying to compare the distances of each little mark of the mud flats uh, with the height of the tower. I just want to do enough drawing to guide the brush. Um, if I think I can draw it, or if I can think I can paint it without a drawing, uh, then I'll avoid doing all those marks. I, I don't like doing everything twice. And um, doing things twice, the, the little sort of sense of boredom actually, the repetition shows in the painting, I think. Just going to height and crack the a little bit of drawing on the tower um, to make it a bit higher. And there's one or two of these, quite a lot of these little piles of wood sticking out. I think they're left over um, from old keys and oyster beds. I try and keep my materials as simple as possible so I can set up, particularly when the conditions aren't ideal, um, although it is warm today because there's a, a brisk a southeast wind, um, try and keep my materials as simple as possible. That's just ordinary tap water. And uh, as usual on conditions like this, um, or on days like this, I've primed my palette with fresh paint before I left home. So all I've got to do is, once I've opened my palette, I can literally get stuck in and start painting without mucking about squeezing tubes of paint out. Now some cobalt blue, an ultramarine. I'm going to start with the sky. I, I want to get this sky in as straight away. Uh, I don't always start with the sky, but I'm anxious to get this sort of breezy sky in straight away. So ultramarine and cobalt blue enough water to um, make the paint flow off. I'm right-handed so I start in the top left-hand corner and work briskly across the paper adding a little bit more water as I come down because the blue gets a little bit lighter as you come down towards the horizon. Always remember that watercolour dries lighter and probably slightly less intense in colour and therefore it's important to put good strong colour if you want to paint each area as I do or try and aim to get each area done once to retain that nice fresh characteristic um, transparency of watercolour which so many of us find attractive and that will help contribute to portraying a nice fresh breezy day. There's a bit of cobalt violet, um, a little bit of light red and raw sienna to give me a warmish blue, a lighter blue now, 
keep working down across the paper. Any little white flecks I've left in the sky sort of accidentally on purpose. There's, there's a certain sort of careful carelessness but they help separate some of the uh, cloud forms but also give a, a sense of movement. More light red and dilute raw sienna for those light areas of the sky and cobalt violet, a bit of cobalt blue and raw sienna to get the un warm underneath of the clouds. I can afford to paint round the church tower um, obeying my instruction, my sort of guide of paint each area once. Um, big bold horizontal strokes as you come down towards the tree line. You can go over the tree line so that there's no disconnect once I start painting those trees. And then get straight on with something else. Don't sta look there, don't stand worrying about the sky and watching it dry. So a slightly smaller brush and some raw sienna to indicate the lighter stonework at the bottom of the sea wall on the far distant bank. Although the board is wobbling a bit, that doesn't really matter, particularly as if you press the brush down and paint with the belly of the brush, pulling the brush away from its point in the direction of the handle. Big, strong horizontal strokes now to get these mud flats. It's important here to paint with horizontal strokes to indicate the flatness of the uh, landscape. I mean water will always lay flat. You can swirl the brush about in the clouds, that's a different matter. But here any accidentally flecks of unpainted paper of dry brush work will help indicate the flat sparkle of the, uh, the sun on those uh, sort of glistening mud flats. Could do with a, bit small, a bigger brush really, but uh, I've started so I'll keep going now. Vari variations of the blues and, uh, and a bit of water. There's a bit of um, raw sienna just to get the light side or the light struck side of the uh, Blythe Church Tower. Now this is where I will rest my hand because the board is wobbling so much um, and that's important to get that focal point done fairly carefully. Where edges are straight I think it's important to keep them straight. A Viridian raw sienna and a bit of aureolan yellow to give me a bright green. The wind is so strong it's what my mother and wife would call a good drying wash day so the paint is really drying surface dry straight away because the wind is blowing right across the, um, the surface of the paint so that initial yellow wash has already dried out sufficiently but if this green floods into it a little bit, it won't matter. A bit of dilute burnt sienna now to indicate a little light struck field of ripening straw, hay or corn. We'll come back and uh, moderate that later on. Cadmium yellow with some oriolan. just to lighten up that viridian i would got left over to get these very sun bleached, very light sun bleached areas of, of seaweed on the mud flats. Tiny bit of viridian just to green it up a bit. It's important to retain the, the freshness of the watercolour. You notice all of the strokes, so you press the brush and draw it across the surface of the paper and allow the texture of the paper, so the roughness of the arch, 
to pull the, the paint off the, the brush. Just have enough moisture on the brush to release the paint so it sits happily on the paper. And work your way down. Don't keep brushing the paper, the paint backwards and forwards uh, as if you're a painter and decorator. A little bit of burnt sienna to warm it up in places. Always vary the colour. Um, any hint of variation, go for that, if, even if necessary, exaggerate it. Um, there's a bit of light struck tr trickle of mud or water there, which is reflecting the deep blue of the sky at the zenith. So you can afford to be quite brave with the blue there. Some alizarin crimson and cult ultramarine for a, an attractive muddy colour. And back to the uh, raw sienna, raw umber. For this very, very light seaweed, which has been whitened in the sun. Now we do the dark, this is a bit of burnt sienna and uh, cobalt to give me the dark side of the church tower. Very difficult to judge this tone. Um, and frankly, I think I haven't got it dark enough. But I'm not going to change it. I don't, I try and avoid overpainting um, and doing a second coat until I've got everywhere else covered. I follow the little guide, never paint anything twice until you've painted everything once. And I'll have a better idea of whether I'll need to adjust that and correct that tone, or whether I can get away with it. Now we go straight on to doing the dark greens um, of the bank of trees while well, that's still wet. There's no hard demarcation of the trees against the church like there is of the trees against the sky and therefore it's important to keep going where the trees are against the church. Got a little bit more time to work to the left and right of the church tower. But every time I go back to the palette I'll dig into a little bit more of a yellow raw sienna, a bit of ball Bit of a bluey grey now just to get that those trees to the right as if you've sort of lost a little bit of interest in driving them into the distance. So the yellows I'm using are raw sienna and raw umber. The viridian is my base green and if I want it extra dark then I'll put some burnt sienna and occasionally some burnt umber. I don't want any sparkle in this dark shadowy area it will make the church and the bank of trees look a little bit see-through. It's just a church, one tree that breaks the church building there. This is the dark green of Viridian and burnt sienna. Now while um, let's do it, just a tiny, tiny bit of drawing where the trees join the sea wall, which slopes down. Um, so any, but I don't want to uh, put too much detail in. Any detail will, will go towards the church tower, because my eventual plan. I'm just softening this edge, by the way. Um, uh, with a, not a wet brush but a damp brush so that the edge, hard edge of the field against those trees doesn't compete with the uh, hard edges of the church tower against the light sky. Go back to this little bit of drawing here. I want a few little marks so the viewer is led through the picture up to the church tower. Burnt sienna, a tiny bit of cobalt blue, an ultramarine 
don't confine yourself just to one blue to give me the the mud the wet mud again big horizontal strokes As the paint dries out on the brush, or it's used up on the brush, you can get a bit of dry brush uh, there. A bit of cobalt, just to indicate the, the reflection. Very important to make sure you get your reflection exactly vertically below the, in this case, the church tower, otherwise it won't look right. There are some things where you can't afford to be careless. Looseness is not an excuse for being careless. Now, I want a cool green, so a little bit of blue with this, Phrygian and raw sienna. And there's some clumps of some sort of marine grasses and foliage. Um, but I treat them as a mass rather than as a botanical exercise because I don't want to set up any um, eye catchers for the viewer as they go through the picture from the bottom to the top on their way to the, uh, the church tower silhouetted against the sky. So it's, it's important to um, assess the impact these additional features make in the picture. Um, they've got to support the, uh, the main act rather than compete with it. The burnt sienna, raw sienna, and, there, there's, and some cobalt violet. Ultramarine, so you keep changing things. There's lots of little flecks of marks of cracks in the mud and bits of weed, another sort of seaweed. Um, and it's just painting enough for the viewer to do the rest. A bit like adding a few bricks on a brick wall and the viewer will and finish it off. Also, deeper green with Viridian and raw sienna for the grass, this sort of um, marshy area that I'm standing on. So it's mainly raw sienna and Viridian which gives a nice organic green. useful area actually because it indicates where I'm standing to the viewer. You know, I'm not sort of hovering. One or two little flecks to indicate the um, grass seeds silhouette against the light mud. And I'll just scratch a few blades that are catching the light with my thumbnail or fingernail, but don't overdo that sort of thing. Once it becomes too eye-catching then it's just enough to explain to the viewer what's going on, satisfy their curiosity, but no, don't arouse it. Now this is a number six sable brush. It's got a bit of a belly, but it's also got a good point. I get on better with this type of brush than I do riggers. Just to add one or two little bits of detail. But any detail I add, <coughs> I'm now thinking is has got to be a sort of pathway for the a visual pathway for the viewer to get to the um, to the church tower, but without being too sort of obvious. I don't want them to feel they're being grabbed by the throat to look in one particular place. So there might be a little a few sort of eye catches elsewhere 
just to deflect their interest momentarily. I've got to rest, this is fairly careful work here, so I've got to rest my hand on the, uh, the board just to stop it flapping about in the wind. There's a few of these little sort of posts and withies. Um, now there's three withies here. I've just indicated them like with a pencil and I've got a bit of weed at the bottom. Little marks of long silted up creeks. Now I've done them I'm beginning to think I, I wish I'd um, had them more unequally spaced in case of sort of uh, being too faithful to what was in front of me. Sometimes you just have to live with the, uh, the mark you've made rather than make a song a dance about trying to repair it and obliterate one with so I'm aware that the repair job will attract probably more attention than the, um, the actual mistake, which most people wouldn't appreciate. And perhaps uh, I can excuse it by thinking, well, the regularity of it will um, be a nice comparison with perhaps the more random nature of these other um, bits of seaweedy uh, wood that are sticking up out of the mud. I think they must be the edges of old oyster pits uh, from many years ago. I'm just taking the, nut, the ones I want, as I say, to lead the viewer, sort of a squirt, you know, snake-like view up, up, the, up the, um, up into the picture, and there'll be some additional marks I shall make later on to vary the the route. Sometimes it will be following these little spiky logs, other times it will be following marks of the, uh, the lighter seaweed. I'm making these um, with variations of burnt sienna, ultramarine cobalt, sometimes a bit of viridian. Just vary it as much as you can. Don't mix up one amorphous black colour and do the whole lot all the same. Although frankly I go to the trouble of airing the colour um, but it doesn't always show in the picture. Slightly bigger ones occasionally help give you a sense of distance because it's one in front of another in front of another. As usual on occasions like this is which ones do I put in and which ones do I leave out. I hope you can begin to get a sense that we can sort of zigzag up the painting on the edge of this seaweedy marsh uh, towards the church tower. A few little darker strokes of the uh, blades of grass against the light mud. But again, the usual thing, don't overdo it. And a bit of dry brush on the edge of this, just to explain that it's foliage um, rather than just a flat clump. Cobalt and a bit of burnt sienna. Now I'm going to darken this church tower now. I haven't got it quite dark enough but I'm coming towards the end so I feel that now is the time to I can get away with over painting and that will reflect the tone of the tower against the sky just soften the bottom so it, there's no hard edge just with a damp brush not a wet brush so there's 
it's lost in all of the trees and some thicker paint of ultramarine and burnt umber to indicate the windows even though it's wet you say the stiff wind is drying things quickly and they'll merge so they won't look as if they're cut out and stuck on now a lighter very very light um, hardly see it um, flagpole at the top just be very very careful with this and there's a red flag distinct red flag it's important that you paint it with very watery paint um, not a bright red so it sort of goes into the distance it's because it's fluttering in the wind as well just see it as a as a uh, blob on the sky a bit of burnt sienna and raw sienna to warm up some of the marshy areas and the mud um, and this is a bit of glazing because we're getting towards the end now and the purpose of these this stroke is to firm up the uh, the, the land if you like um, so it looks a little bit more sort of solid and shows up therefore the the light sparkliness of the mud and the sky the raw sienna and a bit of ultramarine um, just dry brush some more of the dried out mud Oriolan, Phrygian. It's very, very light, almost acidy greens of the seaweed. Now you're beginning to see how we, the viewer will hopefully zigzag their attention up towards the church tower into the picture. But the route has varied by going along the grass or the seaweed and then perhaps jumping from the little spiky marks. Um, and then to the, uh, the darker tone, make the, uh, the visual journey varied. Of, um, glazing on that. Some ultramarine and burnt sienna just to warm that up. And I'm going to glaze this grass in the foreground, just a bit of raw sienna, just to warm it up a bit. Again, mainly to make that just a little bit more solid. And I'm, so my, all my little sparkle dry brush work is around the mud area and in the sky. Well, the sun was, is much higher now, this area was in deep in the shade when we first arrived so just get that um, sh shadowy area there it's just semi damp because of the wind it sort of dries the surface of the watercolour very quickly my wife has just said to me, it's about time you stopped. It's important actually to say that um, you've got to think, is the next stroke going to weaken the picture or make it stronger? I think we'll call that, or oh, just one more thing I think I'll put in. Being a bit too literal there with that mud there. I think we'll call that done now. Thank you for watching.